this promise about ask, 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 whatever you will ask. You know, I want that, when I see the incredibility of that promise, it makes me willing to do anything that God tells me to do in order to be able to have that kind of power with God in prayer. In James 4, 2, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. Let's go to James 4. I want to look at verse 1. How many of you already think you haven't been asking as much as you should be asking? <laughs> so many people are so miserable in their walk with God because they're in works of the flesh. I lived in works of the flesh, and works of the flesh don't work. They're works that don't work. And all you do is just wear yourself out, trying to change your kids, trying to change your spouse, trying, 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 trying. But are you believing? We're called believers because believers are supposed to believe. Otherwise, we'd be called triers. <laughs> and what an awesome answer to everything. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. God's got good office hours 24-7. Whatever you need. You never get a busy signal. Whatever you need, you ask. You ask in Jesus' name. And He hears you. And He'll answer. You know, strife is a really huge problem in people's lives. And it's probably one of the greatest hindrances to answered prayer. People fighting and arguing, disunity in homes, people not getting along in church, choir leaders mad at the pastor, and the people that sing are mad at the choir leader, and Sister Jones is sitting out there wanting to be the worship leader, and you know how it goes. How many of you would you say it's safe to say that the world is pretty much full of strife? And uh, it's a very dangerous thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not just a little problem. It's actually spiritually one of the most dangerous things to the believer. And that's why Jesus said, I'm leaving you my peace. So we have peace. It's up to us whether we decide to use it or not. And one of the reasons why God gives us this great privilege of prayer is so we don't have to worry. Philippians 4 says, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace that passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The very moment that anything happens, that any need arises, you pray. You breathe out that prayer to God. You don't have to be in a certain posture. You don't have to be in a certain place. You just pray. You talk to God about everything. But I will admit, and I'm sure that many of you would say the same thing, that even though you went to church regularly, even though I went to church regularly and I was actually a leader in the church, I mean, there was so much strife in my life. And James 4, verse 1 says, what leads to strife and discord and feuds? And how do conflicts and quarrels and fights originate? Why can't we get along with people? Why are so many people so unhappy? You know, there's not a lot of really full-time happy Christians. I'm talking full-time happy Christians. You know, we can get slappy happy, jumpy happy when we come to church. You know, and the, the worship team is playing and it's like, oh, we're person. But I'm talking about full-time happy. Full-time happy happy in the storm happy when the storm is over full time happy verse 2 says here's the problem you ready you're jealous <laughs> you covet what other people have and your desires go unfulfilled. So you become a murderer because the hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. 
You burn with envy and anger and you're not able to get what you want. <laughs> so you fight and you war. And here it is. You do not have because you do not ask. Oh my gosh. You do not have because you do not ask. If you see somebody get a blessing, instead of being jealous of them and getting an attitude, you need to be glad for them and just say to God, I think that's really nice. That's something I would enjoy. God, if you would ever want to do that for me, I'd be joyful, but I'm happy. You know, we have to say to ourselves sometimes, I don't have to have that to be happy. I'm happy right now. I don't have to have what you have to be happy. I'm happy right now. We have to, you know, we all have to remember that we're individuals before God and He's got an individual plan for our life and He doesn't do everything the same way in everybody else's life. You know, Phil Wickham, our worship leader here tonight, he's, he's an awesome singer. But can I tell you something? There's probably people in the world that can, could sing circles around him and they'll never have the opportunity to do what he's doing. Why? And as people, we sit back and, why God, why not me? Because God is God. And that's about all you can say. Because God is God and he does what he does for reasons that we don't always know. I don't know why I'm, people ask me all the time, well, why do you think that your ministry got so big? And why do you think? And why do you think? And why do you think? Well, I could come up with a handful of things, but they'd all be nonsense. The truth of the matter is, is God. And we can have peace if we just begin to say, you know what, God, I believe that you're in control. And if that's what you want me doing, then you'll make that happen in my life. And if you don't, then I'm happy anyway. Come on, I want some people to have some peace when you leave this conference. You have not because you ask not. Ask and receive that your joy may be full. Well, I just don't think I can be happy if my husband don't change. Well, you know what? I used to think that too and mine didn't and now I'm happy. Well, he didn't. I mean, there wasn't all that much wrong with him to start with. It was me that had the problem, and I just thought he had to change so I could be happy. And when I finally found out that I needed to take responsibility for my own joy and quit trying to give somebody else the job of keeping me happy. <laughs> Amen? Well, Dave played too much golf, and I didn't like it because he played golf. Well, he still plays golf. And he plays golf more now than he did back then. He plays golf, and he plays golf, and he plays golf, and he watches golf, and he watches football, and he watches basketball and baseball, and hockey, and soccer, and cricket, and anything that's on, he watches it. And I'm happy. And I'm happy because we've been married 43 and a half years, and now when he watches all that stuff, I get time to myself. I'm happy. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Woo! You have not. Well, I just can't be happy. If I can't have kids, I can't be happy. Oh, if this kid doesn't grow up and get out of this house, I can't be happy. <laughs> I can't be happy if I can't have a bigger house. Oh, I can't be happy if I'm going to have to clean this big house every week. <laughs> Come on, you have not because you ask not. Ask, release it to God, and say, God, I trust you. If this is what I'm supposed to have, you're going to do it at the right time, and I'm going to be happy in the meantime because I'm here to serve you. Amen? Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, ask. All right. Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. 
Is there anybody here that can think of some things that you've been, it's been your little project you've been working on? <laughs> some person you've been working on, but the truth is you don't pray for them very much. Come on, don't you be lying. <laughs> Ask, cast your care. Now, the second hindrance that we'll talk about to prayer is hidden sin. Now, we just, we just have to come clean and say that you can't just pull certain scriptures out of the Bible and try to make them work without taking the whole counsel of the Word of God. And so, we do sin, but thank God we have an answer. Every Christian has an answer, an immediate answer, every time you do something wrong. And that is, is to admit it, confess it, receive God's forgiveness, and go on intending to change and never do it again if God will graciously help you and strengthen you. But you can't just ignore things. I can't just ignore things. One of the greatest reasons why Christians are unhappy is because they have things hidden in their heart and they're being pretenders putting on the Christian happy face every Sunday. Now, I'll just tell you one thing. If you're going to church every Sunday and your house is full of strife all week and you're praying and wondering why your prayers aren't answered, you might as well just start confessing, getting the strife out of your house. Start being the one to try to be the peacemaker, the maintainer of peace, and then God can answer your prayers. Lord, I remember all the years I'd fight with Dave all the way to church every Sunday morning and then wonder why my prayers weren't answered. How stupid, how utterly, absolutely stupid. But I didn't know any better. I was only picking out the parts of the Bible that I liked. I was only picking out the parts that were going to get me something. Come on now. <laughs> I wasn't picking out the parts that were going to require something of me. And as I said, you'll understand this better by the time we get to the end of it. But I want this promise about ask, 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 whatever you will ask. You know, I want that. When I see the incredibility of that promise, it makes me willing to do anything that God tells me to do in order to be able to have that kind of power with God in prayer. How tragic that so many of us miss that because we'd rather hang on to some dumb, bad attitude. Well, I'm not going to go tell him I'm sorry. I'm the one that always has to say I'm sorry. And I'm just not doing it. And I'm not going to forgive him. Well, you're going to miss an awful lot. You're going to have your bad attitude, but you're going to miss a lot. You know, not all Christians are spiritual Christians. A lot of Christians are carnal Christians. That means that they are, they are saved, but they walk in the flesh. Will that keep you out of heaven? You know, first of all, I'm not the one to judge all that because I don't know what people are doing. But I mean, let's just say by and large, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people in heaven that just didn't act too great while they were here because they really, truly do believe in Jesus. They really do. But I can tell you one thing. You won't live a powerful life. You won't live a happy life. You won't live a peaceful life. Your life won't be a witness to anybody else. I was a Christian for many, many years before I became a serious Christian. I was a church-going Christian. I did good works. I was on the church board. I went to church all the time. My kids went to Christian schools. And I can tell you that my life was no different than any sinner up and down my street. And if anything, I could have kept people out of heaven with my attitude. Because when people see that we're churchgoers, but we act no different than them, then there's no respect. And the greatest thing that we need to do today is to live the life. To just simply live the life. Now, we're going to make mistakes, but we need to immediately ask God to forgive us. We need to come clean, get it out in the open, and go on. I think it's so important.
especially if you've got a stronghold in your life something that just keeps occurring over and over and over and you can't seem to get free I think one of the things that's very helpful is to confess your faults to somebody that you love and trust and ask them to pray because the last thing the devil wants you to do is bring things out in the open he wants things hidden secrets kill people it, it's amazing what we do to ourselves when we hide stuff we don't have to play games with each other you don't have to be the perfect person all week how was your day yesterday I acted really bad all day yesterday really bad but I sure am glad that God's gracious and that he's willing to forgive me I've talked with him about it he's forgiven me and you can pray for me too because I need all the help I can get amen not how, how, how are you yesterday fine fine just fine praise the Lord fine <laughs> Psalm 66 18 confession is so good I think we should start every morning before we even try to pray just say God if there's anything that I've done that's been offensive to you or anyone else bring it to light right now so I can confess it and get rid of it You know, I don't, obviously not picking on anybody in particular, but you know, as I sit here and look, I mean, I know with this many people here that there have to be people here that you've just got all kinds of secrets. God knows anyway. We're not really keeping anything from God. And when you talk to God about your sins, don't, don't call them, well, Lord, I'm sorry, I missed it. That's a new word for sin. I missed it. To sin means to miss the mark, but I don't like to hear people say that. Call it what it is. I was jealous. I was hateful. I was rude. I was unloving. I was unkind. We don't like to call it what it is because it sounds nasty to us. It's like, Bleh. But that makes the forgiveness all the much better. Amen. Then when my heart's right with God, when there's nothing there, my heart's right, then I can come to him and ask boldly. And when the devil tries to remind me, well, you can't ask for that. Look at what you did yesterday. Say, well, you're missing the point. I confessed it. God forgave me. Now I can ask in Jesus' name. Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. James 5, 16, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Are you seeing that? Let's go back and look at the first part of it. This is all one scripture. <laughs> Confess your faults to one another. Your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And no, you don't have to tell everybody that you know everything that you did. But we, we, we must stop living phony pretend lives and be real amen confess your faults your slips your false steps your offenses and pray for one another don't judge people when you know that they've done something pray for them that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Satan wants us to do things wrong. He wants us to be loaded under guilt and condemnation, never really deal with it, and then try to pray these pitiful, pathetic, well, God, if you'll just do this one thing, I'll never ask you for anything else. 
I hate what the devil does to people. I talked to a woman in a store one day and she was waiting on me and we just struck up a conversation. I think she recognized me from TV and then she told me what church that she went to. And then I got to asking her about how they're, you know, how they were paid in the store. I said, do you get commission or you paid hourly? She said, well, I'm paid by the hour, but she said, I have a quota that I have to make. And if I don't make that quota, then I can, you know, if I keep not making it long enough, then I can lose my job. And uh, she said, sometimes it gets kind of scary, you know, because you're doing everything you know how to. And if you just don't meet the quota, then you, you know, you could get fired. And I said, well, why don't you pray and just ask God to send people to you? She said, well, You can't do that, can you? I said, pray and ask God to give you favor. Pray that when people look at you, they're just going to like you. That they're going to want to buy things from you. She said, well, now listen to this. This woman's been in church 30 years. And this is what she said to me. Well, you can't pray about money, can you? That was sad. But you know how many people there are, even people right now watching me, that you're even like, you mean I could pray for that? Whatever you ask in my name, presenting all that I am. If you abide in me, my word abides in you. Ask what you will. Why can't we ask for favor? I get a lot of favor. It amazes me the favor that I get. And it's not just because I'm on television, I ask for favor. I pray that God will give me favor. Almost every day of my life, I pray for favor and I confess favor. I don't have time to try to do the dance to try to make everybody like me. I tried that in the first few years and it will just kill you. So I finally decided, God, you are going to have to make them like me because this is what I am. This is it. And I can't try to do it one way for you and another way for you and another way for you and another way for you. So I just believe God gives me favor. Pray for open doors. Pray for God to open doors that you can't open and close doors that need to be closed that you're not willing to close. Did you hear me? Don't just pray for God to open doors. Pray for God to close doors in your life that need to be closed. <laughs> Start getting honest with God. It will be so hard if you start really calling things what they are and maybe having a good friend or a, or a, a spouse or a, a sibling that you feel like you can really trust and begin to make yourself accountable to somebody and confess things and ask for prayer. Whew. Boy, you're going to make the devil mad when you do that because he wants you to keep everything hidden and put a plastic praise the Lord sign on your face. When really inside, you're just about destroyed. Well, I really hope that today's teaching has made you even more excited about praying and partnering with God for your needs. You know, when we want something from God, when we need His help, we need to ask Him for it. James 4, 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. That's so simple. Ask. God is a good God and He wants to meet your needs. Madagascar today and I want to show you something really beautiful. These are children who are part of the Hand of Hope feeding program here in this village. They receive a solid meal every day. Now let me tell you, sometimes when you hear one meal a day, is that really much? It is so much more than you can even imagine. Look at these children. They're seated at a table where they are served a, a good, solid meal. And when their bellies are filled, that's something that cannot be taken away from them. But it's even more than that. 
they're receiving love and respect. They need to understand that they are valuable and that there is a God out there who knows them and loves them and has a good plan for their life. You're part of making all that happen. It's a lot more than you think it is when you look at it. And we appreciate so much what you do through Hand of Hope to help us help these kids. Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu... Hoe je Gods stem kunt horen, telefonisch op 026 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl. Ga ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meyer Nederland. Like deze pagina en je krijgt regelmatig exclusief een video van Joyce op jouw Facebook met korte, inspirerende boodschappen die voor nieuwe impulsen zorgen in je dagelijks leven. Dat en meer bij Joyce Meyer Nederland op Facebook.